Hello students, today's agenda is to check homework. We'll be learning quadratic equations and you will be able to do 1.7. Today, students will be able to practice quadratic equations and define the type of roots that you get from solving those. And we'll be applying and reviewing the different ways to solve them. Um, so the, we'll use this, the one that is easier to, to find the solutions, okay? So for the first one, all we have to do is cancel the square. Remember that the opposite of the square is the square root. And if we do it to one side, we do it to the other. So the solution will be x equals. Anytime that you take the square root, you always get the plus and the minus of the solution. For 6, 6 is not a perfect square. And the only two factors is 2 times 3. So it's just going to stay as positive negative of square root of 6. Those are your two um, roots. And because of the square root, we can say that these are two irrational real roots. We can just say two real roots um, because it doesn't have the imaginary. Irrational, it just means that it stays in the square root. For this one to solve it, uh, it's easier to get the greatest common factor and that's because all my terms have x and so the greatest common factor GCF is x and you start dividing x squared divided by x is x, 5x divided by x is 5 and that's equals to 0 and so this is a factor, this is a factor for my solution to be equals to zero, that means that one of the two factors have to be zero. So if I want to make this zero, that means that the value of x is zero. Or if I want to make this factor zero, that means that this needs to be negative five because negative five plus five is zero. So these are my two solutions and these are two real roots or real solutions. Now, what are real solutions? Well, through this unit, we have seen that if they only have like an imaginary component, then they're imaginary. If they have, uh, let's say like two, even plus minus uh, two i, then they have a real portion and a imaginary portion, then they are complex solutions or complex roots. And that's when they don't touch the x-axis, okay? That's what it means. Uh, this is imaginary. And you might have just answers like this, like negative or a fraction or the square root. All of those are real solutions, okay? So real include um, integers, meaning positives and negatives, including the zero. Um, including the zero, and it includes irrational numbers. Um, it includes fractions, which is rational, okay, decimals. So all of those, these are rational, these are irrational, and zero, it's included in the negatives and positives, okay? Integers include positive, negatives, and zero. Now, uh, for this one, there are two different ways to solve it, but I'm going to do by canceling. So I'm going to add 36 to both sides. And you get x squared equals 36 because 0 plus 36 is 36. I take the square root of both sides. And so x equals plus minus 6. Those are two possible solutions. So one is positive 6, and the other one is negative 6. You could also have do, done this by um, the difference of squares, okay? But I'm just going to leave it at that. And so these are two real, two real solution or roots, okay? Okay, for this one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to cancel by subtracting 36. And you get x squared equals negative 36. We take the square root of both sides. And x is equals to plus minus. 
the square root of 36 is 6 and the square root of negative is the imaginary number. Notice how because this is a whole number, this was able to simplify the number is on the left. If we ended up with the square root, the square root stays on the right of the imaginary number. So these are my two solutions of roots. And because it has the imaginary, it's just two imaginary roots. It doesn't have a real portion. Okay, for this one in here, you can just factor uh, directly because 1 times 6 is 6 and 1 plus 6 is 7. Or you can use the diamond, which is exactly the same, but you have it organized in this way. On top, we're going to put the third number. Uh, in the bottom of the diamond, you will put the middle term coefficient, which is positive 7. And then you're finding two numbers that multiply equals 6, but when you add them equals 7. We already said that 1 times 6 is 6, 1 plus 6 is 7. We open our parentheses, and we put x, x, and we add this two, including its signs. So plus 1 plus 7, no, plus 6. This is plus 6. And so, again, for this to be, one of these two factors have to be 0 so that when you multiply, you get 0. Because multiplying 0 times anything will give you 0. So how can I make this factor 0? If I have positive 1, this needs to be negative 1. Or if I have positive 6, this needs to be negative 6. Again, these are two real roots. For this one, again, we're not going to go into detail. This is a special, it's a perfect square. Uh, some of you were able to notice that this is a perfect square, this is a perfect square. So what you do is, so if you divide the middle term by two and you take the square root of that perfect square and you get the same answer, not paying attention to the sign, of course, you will have a perfect square. What does that mean? And I'm going to put it like this, uh, but also I want to show you something else to make sure we understand this part. We put it in here and just divide 4 by 2 is 2, but also the square root of 4 is 2, so that means that it is a perfect square. And in here, you will always include the sign in here. If it's positive, you put plus. If it's negative, it will be negative. Okay. What does this mean? And I want to write it down here just so that we understand. It means that we're multiplying this times itself two times. Two times. That exponent tells me that that's what I'm doing. Multiplying this times itself two times. So the answer in here will be, well, I need for this to be zero. So this needs to be negative two. Or for this to be zero also needs to be negative two. And some people would say, oh, okay, you write it only once, but it's actually two solutions, but it's a duplicate. Okay, we have a duplicity of two because you have the answer two times. So even though when we solve in here, if we take the square root, this cancels, you get x plus two equals plus minus zero, when you're adding or subtracting zero, that's not going to have an impact on anything. Subtract zero from, I mean, subtract two from both sides. This cancels and you get x equals negative two because negative two plus zero is negative two. Negative two minus zero is negative two. You write it only once, but in when you graph it, if you go to decimals again, And we put x squared plus 4x plus 4. Then notice how it touches only one time in there. But again, I, I showed this to you so that you can see that you have two solutions. And again, later on, we'll explain that in a separate video. So we have two 
real roots or solutions, okay? Again, it comes out as one answer, but it's because you're adding zero and you're subtracting zero, you end up with two of the same, okay? For number seven, I can multiply these times this and do the diamond and then um, put this one in down below. And I actually can do that and do grouping, but I'm just going to go directly to the quadratic formula. X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC over 2A. If you would like to see that in by multiplying A times C and grouping, let me know in the comments below and I can actually create a video for you. Okay, so in here A will be 2, B will be 5, and C will be 3. And so we start substituting the values. Um, how did I get A? A is always with X squared, B is always with X, and C will always be the constant. So negative from the formula, B is 5, plus minus the square root of B squared, B is 5, squared minus 4 times A, which is 2, times C, which is 3, divided by 2 times A, 2 times 2. Then I start simplifying, and I can simplify this part right here, this part right here and this part right here at the same time. So I get negative 5 plus minus the square root of 5 times 5 because 5 squared means 5 times 5 is 25. You're multiplying that base times itself 2 times. Minus 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. Divided by 2 times 2 is 4. Then I'm going to Continue simplifying. Now I can simplify this part right here. So negative 5 plus minus the square root of 25 minus 24 is 1 divided by 4. Now some people leave it like that and think that the square root of 1 doesn't have anything. We're just looking for a number that multiply times, multiply times itself is that number. So 1 times 1 is 1. And so we have a pair. We take out one of them and cross the other one so the answer is one okay so x equals negative negative five negative five plus minus one divided by four and so let me do that in here so now what i'm going to do is because i have plus minus right plus minus that means that you have negative 5 plus 1 divided by 4 and also we have the other answer negative 5 minus 1 divided by 4 so let's separate them negative 5 plus 1 divided by 4 and negative 5 minus 1 divided by 4 so x is equals to negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4 divided by 4 or negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6 divided by 4 and that gives us negative 4 divided by 4 negative 1 or negative 6 divided by 4 we can only simplify it by dividing by 2 negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3 4 divided by 2 is 2 and so those are my two real solutions or real roots two real roots rational solution rational just means that it can be written as a fraction okay and this one can also be written as a fraction by putting it over one okay the last one we have 3x squared plus 4x plus 8 again we can do grouping and see if that works, but I'm just going to go to x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 ac all over 2a. So a is 3, b is 4, c is 8. And so x is equal to negative b, meaning negative 4, 
plus minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times a, a is 3, c is 8, divided by 2 times a, and a is 3. So in here we have negative 4 plus minus the square root of 4 squared means 4 times 4, not 4 times 2, but 4 times 4, which is 16, minus 4 times 3, so we did this, we are going to do this, and so 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 8, it's 2 times 8 is 16, carry 1, 8, and 1 is 9, so 96, all divided by 2 times 3 is 6. We bring down this plus minus the square root of 16 minus 96. We subtract and leave the greater sign, so it's going to be negative 80. Okay, divided by 6. x is equal to negative 4 plus minus. Now remember that because of the negative it comes out as an imaginary okay and the 80 what you want to do is to take the square root so you can simplify it by taking the the prime factorization and so in here we're going to do i'll do 8 times 10 remember that you can just do 2 times 40 2 times 20 2 times 10 etc etc or you can use other factors but just make sure you simplify all the way so in here, two, 2 cannot be simplified anymore. 4 is 2 times 2. The 10 I factored as 2 times 5. Out of order, sorry about that. But all you're doing is just breaking into the smallest factor, prime factors that you can get. Okay. After you have the prime factors, you get pairs. And the lonely ones you put, I put it into a square to make it easier. For the pairs... In each pair, I get one out, outside of the square root, and the other one, you cross it out. I take one out and multiply it with the other one, and cross that one out. But the ones that don't have pairs that are lonely, I just leave it inside of the square root. Okay? And so now I multiply 2 times 2 is 4, square root of 5. Now, I want you to see how I arrange this. This whole number... I'm going to put it on the left of the imaginary number. The square root of 5, I'm going to put it on the right of the imaginary number, divided by 6. Now I'm going to do the pretzel. First simplify that part, and then this part. And I notice in reality that all of them are divisible by 2. Okay, so we're going to divide by 2 and by 2. And also, in this this other part of the pretzel, both are divisible by 2 as well. Okay? So, negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. I bring down the plus minus, meaning that I'm going to have two answers or two roots. 4 divided by 2 is 2. This, I just bring down the i and the square root of 5. You just bring it down and... You can simplify 6 divided by 2 equals 3. And so those are your two complex solutions. Why are they complex? Because they have a real portion, a real portion, and an imaginary portion. Okay? So two, two complex solutions or roots. With this, we finish our lesson. If you can please give us a thumbs up, subscribe around here. Here is the link to the entire unit, and here you will find the next lesson. For now, you're able to do 1.7, and have fun.